Hello, I'm Graham, and I hope everyone's having a great day. Welcome to part two in this video tutorial series I'm running for new users to the Panasonic Lumix SZ2000 or 2500 bridge camera. Now, in this series, we're going to take a look at getting better photographs and video when you're using the SZ2000. And I'm going to call the camera the SZ2000 for sake of clarity. Now, in today's video, I want to look at shooting in the IA Plus mode. Now the IA Plus mode, the mode that's there by default when you first buy the camera, is a good starting point for any new user to the camera. It gives you the confidence to take the camera out and get some good pictures. The software engineers year on year are getting better at making that scene determination work correctly so you get less misfires and uh, incorrect colours and scene types being recognised. So the camera is now at the stage where we can actually use it in a day-to-day -day situation and get some good pictures for you. Now, there are some situations where the camera doesn't quite get that right, and Panasonic do state in their literature to keep an eye on the top left-hand side of the screen, which shows you the mode that camera has selected. So, for example, if you're taking a portrait of someone and you see the icon has come up with a food de designation, then obviously you're not going to get the right shooting conditions set for that portrait. So they ask you then to come out of the IA mode and select one of the manual scene types to reflect the scene that you're taking. Now, within the IA Plus mode, we are given some creative control. We can actually change the amount of what Panasonic referred to as background defocus. What that really means is we're changing the aperture control. So we can use a wide aperture if you want shallow depth of field, or you can use a smaller aperture if you want more depth of field than the camera selected. We've also got a colour tint control, and that effectively is changing the white balance. So we can either add warmth to our scene or we could cool it down. And also there's the exposure value compensation and they call it the brightness control. So for example, if you're shooting a scene against a bright background and the camera hasn't recognized the fact that you've got a backlit scene, you can actually use exposure value compensation to brighten the scene by adding positive exposure value compensation. Now I'll be showing you how to access those controls from the flyout screen on the LCD display, but more importantly, which buttons to push on the camera to save you having to use the LCD screen if you don't like using that small flyout panel. Let's look how IA mode works first of all. It looks at the light coming through the lens falling on the sensor, and it looks at the intensity of that light and also on the colours of the light that's affecting the sensor. And it can determine whether you're shooting a landscape, a portrait, whether you're shooting a close-up shot, or whether it's a nighttime portrait. So it can actually select a number of scene types that have been pre-programmed into the camera to give you the best possible shooting conditions for that scene type. Once it's determined a particular scene type, it sets up the parameters to shoot that scene correctly. Now, if the camera doesn't recognize the scene that you're shooting, it will just use the IA standard algorithms and it will use the exposure metering circuit to get the right exposure. So in most situations, if you can't find a scene that's being recognized correctly, the camera will make an attempt at giving you a decent picture anyway by using just default programs. Let's look at some of the scene types that I've been shooting today. Unfortunately, I went out this morning to shoot these scenes uh, outside, uh, but it started to rain, so I didn't actually get to finish the video outside. Came back to shoot it in the garden, but unfortunately I had a problem with the microphone, so there was no sound. So this is a third attempt really to get you this video out today. Now this is the scene that I was trying to record for you this morning before the rain started. You can see on the back of the screen in the replay mode that the camera did select a um, correct mode for shooting, which was the landscape mode indicated by the um, distant mountain scene here on the icon. So that's the eye landscape mode. So we've got the correct shooting conditions. You notice that it came up with an aperture of f2.8 and a shutter speed of 1 to 50 of a second and it selected a nice ISO of ISO 1 to 5. It was quite a dull morning, uh, just uh, impending rain, so that's why the aperture was selected at f2.8. But for a landscape shot where we want from foreground to distance in, in focus, we ought to have had a aperture, something in the region of f5.6 or f8, with this particular camera having a one inch sensor to give me that amount of depth of field. I also notice this image looks to be slightly underexposed because it's been influenced by the amount of brightness in the sky behind the landscape. So in this instance, I would be using exposure value compensation to correct the image. And you can now see that I've corrected this image. I've used the 
background defocus control or the aperture control to set an aperture of f7.1 and have applied some exposure value compensation of plus two thirds of an EV to brighten the scene and you can still notice that we've got some detail in the clouds but we've got much more detail in the foreground and we've got from foreground to background which are completely sharp. The camera is still selecting an ISO of 320 and I've got no control over the ISO in the IA mode. So I still would have to suffer a little bit of image noise because we are using this ISO of 320. Now in the next shot you can see here I've kept the same aperture of f7.1. The shutter speed was a 60th of a second. The ISO was 320 again set by the camera. I've reduced the exposure value compensation to one third of an EV and I've actually applied a little bit of colour correction to warm the scene up. So I used the colour tint control and moved it towards the orange or the warmer side to add a little bit of warmth to the scene. Now if I came across a landscape shot that I really wanted to get better quality then I would actually switch into the aperture priority mode as I've done here. I've actually set an aperture of f8 so I've got more depth of field. Um, again a little bit of exposure value compensation because the amount of sky we've got in this picture and I've dropped the ISO to ISO 125. So you can see we've got more depth of field and we've got lower noise in this image because I've selected a lower ISO and a uh, smaller aperture to give me that depth of field. The fact that I'm on a uh, tripod it doesn't matter that I'm down to 1 20th of a second to record this image. Now in this selfie you can see that the camera has selected the portrait mode so it knows this is a portrait and has selected a softer contrast to record the image. Here in this shot again uh, taken after dusk it selected the eye nightscape mode to enable it to capture this image and notice that the uh, camera selected a aperture of 5.6, the shutter speed was 3.2 3 seconds and it dropped the ISO to 125 to reduce the amount of noise but again you're on a tripod so the shutter speed uh, is irrelevant you're going to get a nice amount of depth of field and low noise because the camera selected a low ISO. Now I'm going to demonstrate the flyout panel and the control buttons to access the same features uh, by using this tabletop scene. Now you can see the cameras correctly recognize the fact that I'm shooting a macro because we're in a short focus distance. Uh, the icon is a little flower icon which means we're in a macro mode. Now the camera is selecting an aperture of f3.4. The shutter speed is 1 80th of a second. We don't actually know what the ISO is until we take the picture. So to give you a rough indication of what that shutter speed will be, if you temporarily go into the 4K mode and then depress the shutter button, you'll see that we're going to get an ISO of around 1600. Because of the actual changing crop, we won't get a real indication of the ISO or the shutter speed until we go back to the actual scene, but it gives you an idea of what the camera is going to be using. So if I go back to the standard uh, mode and I take that picture, you'll see the camera used the ISO of 1250. Now if you're shooting a desktop scene or close up, you probably want more depth of field than the camera's giving you at f3.4. So to achieve that, we would use the flyout panel and use the background defocus to select a smaller aperture. So you can actually touch this icon which will bring up the aperture scale and then you can use the back control dial to change the aperture from um, f4 all the way up to f11 depending on the amount of zoom you've got how much the lower or the wider aperture will be. So for this shot I would probably want something like f8 so by setting f8 I would get a shutter speed of 1 25th of a second. Again, if I take that picture, it'll show me the ISO the camera selected. And again, it's gone up to ISO 1600 to accommodate the fact that we've now gone to a small aperture. Again, using the ISO 1600 is going to introduce an amount of noise in the subject. So we could either use the flyout panel or if you use the function button 6, which is to the lower left of the four-way navigation dial, it saves you having to bring out the, the flyout panel. So if I just collapse the panel 
in like so and I press the function button 6 it directly takes me to the aperture control so again I can select the aperture that I want for this particular picture. Now if I found that the uh, exposure was over or underexposed again you would normally use the flyout screen and use the exposure value compensation by using again the back control dial or the navigation buttons to change the amount of exposure compensation. But instead of having to use that flyout panel you can use the exposure compensation dial which is the front top control which will then take you directly to exposure value compensation and you can dial in plus or minus dependent whether your scene's too dark or too bright. So if I wanted two thirds of an EV then I would just dial up two clicks with the front exposure compensation. And again if I wanted to add a colour tint you could either fly out the panel by touching the AIA mode and then go to the colour tint control and then you can change the colour temperature from cold to warm dependent on your particular taste. Or you can press the white balance control on the four way navigation dial and that will bring you up to the same slider control and then you can change it by either using the touch screen or you can use the left right navigation buttons or the back control wheel just depends how you would prefer to use the camera. By default, when you're shooting in the IA modes, the camera uses face detection to try and establish if there are any faces within the scene. If it finds faces, it will switch to face detection and try and focus on faces and, more importantly, if it can do, focus on the eye nearest to the camera and it will use eye detection. Now if you use face recognition and you set up some uh, profiles for particular faces it will try and prioritize those in a group of people. So if you shoot in a group and you've got people in that group that have got the face recognized and stored in the database it will prioritize the camera focus on those people. Well here on screen now you can see the image recognition software uh, showing you face detection and here's a still image um, of a a portrait of my grandson Harrison taken when he was uh, just about a year old um, so it's actually a photograph in a frame but you can see that it's recognized a face and Harrison's in my database so it's actually recognized the fact that this is Harrison and if you notice here is a crosshair and it's on the eye of the portrait so it's trying to determine the actual eye which is closest to the camera and set focus on that so this is the image recognition in operation and you see it's quite good at achieving a good result Notice also in the icon here it's I baby and it's got an R in it which means that that face has been recognized in the registered database. Now if it doesn't recognize faces the camera will switch into the 49 area mode and it will try and determine the subject that's most likely to be the principal point of focus. Now that may not be the, fo the point of focus that you want the camera set to, to select and in that case you can use the touch screen to put on focus tracking. Now you can see on screen when I have to press the shutter button because there are no faces in the scene the camera is attempting to determine what the actual focus point is and it's using the 49 area method and it's determining the um, focus points with those focus rectangles. Now if it's not coming up with the right point you can actually use the touch screen to set the point that you need to be in focus. So if I use my stylus on the screen I can actually point to the area that I want to be in focus and then that will become the uh, focus tracking area. So even if the subject moves and if I move the subject for you on the table you'll notice that the focus tracking keeps track of where I pointed to on the subject. So this is good if you've got children running across the scene and you want to keep them in focus. So now when we press the shutter button it will focus on that point and uh, lock focus and take the exposure. If you use the four-way navigation dial to set the active focus point you can't change it using the uh, control you must uh, use your touch screen to position it where you need it and then that becomes the active focus point. You can't change the position of the active track by using the navigation dials unfortunately. So even if you're using it to focus and recompose, the camera will try to stay locked on the image that you selected in your target. So this is useful if you're selecting um, an image where the subject may be moving, so children moving in the picture or pets, and the camera will try and maintain focus 
on those subjects. So that's a useful feature within the IA mode. Now, unfortunately, when you're shooting in the IA modes, there is no way to control the ISO the camera selected. So you'll find that if you're shooting on a bright sunny day, the camera will be selecting ISO 125, which is fantastic. But if it's a Doda, you might find the camera is selecting ISO 500, 800 or 1200, and you might start to see some noise in your images. In that sort of situation, you might want to be using a wider aperture if the camera's not selected a wide aperture, or a slower shutter speed if the camera hasn't selected a sure sh slower shutter speed by using the program auto mode or one of the aperture or shutter priority modes. You'll also notice that in some situations, because the camera is using the intelligent ISO mode, it will try to raise the ISO to eliminate any subject motion that's appearing in the image. So if you're shooting something like indoor sports, you may still see some subject motion blur because the camera hasn't really recognized the speed at which those subjects are moving or not elevated the shutter speed fast enough to stop that subject motion blur. So again, in those sort of situations, it's best to select a shutter priority mode and set the shutter speed relevant to the focal length that you're using and also how close your subject is to the camera to eliminate that subject motion blur. Again, if you're shooting close-ups like you can see on screen now, you might want to be selecting a smaller aperture to give you more depth of field. Again, if you're using ISO, if you haven't got enough light on your subject, it again, again might be using a high ISO and that will introduce noise into a situation. In that sort of situation, if you can get more light onto a subject, the camera will use a lower ISO and you'll be rewarded with better pictures. If you can't achieve that in IASO, then again, the uh, semi-automatic mode, and in particular, the aperture priority mode will give you a better picture because now you're in control of the amount of depth of field and the ISO you set to give you the correct picture. Well, that's it for the IA mode. And then the next video, we'll be looking at the semi-automatic modes of P, which is program auto, the aperture priority mode and shutter priority mode and which of those modes to select for the type of pictures that you're shooting. Now if you're a new viewer to the channel and you like what you see please do click that subscribe button and the bell notification icon which will give you notification when I upload the subsequent videos in this series. Also check out my photographic blog and I'm going to put a link to that in the video description below this video and that will give you access to my uh, three weekly newsletter. It's more than a newsletter, it's a technical publication in its own right and I publish a lot more technical information on cameras and camera systems than I do in my photographic blog so please do check that out and if you're not already contributing to that uh, please do do so. So until the next video thanks very much for watching please do take care and I hope to see you all in that next video. Goodbye for now.